In 1990, when I became music director of the Pacific Symphony, there was one thing that I knew I needed to have. I needed to have a composer in residence. I needed to have a creative partner who would write music for the Pacific Symphony, who would allow us to live in the 20th century as a young American orchestra. There was one composer that I had known for several years before who I felt was exactly the perfect composer for our orchestra, for me personally, and also for you, our audience. And that was Frank Kelly. So Frank Kelly became our composer in residence during the second year of my tenure as music director. He's written us six works, and the first work he wrote for us was entitled Radiant Voices. This is a 20-minute work. It's what is called through composed, meaning that it's in four different distinct sections, but it, it's played without stop. This was written in 1993 um, and was a result of his feelings about the LA riots of that time. Now, this is not a reflection of riotous music. This is more a hopeful statement. It's something that is positive in hopes that something positive would come from this dark time in, in Los Angeles' life. So he wrote this piece called Radiant Voices. It is also a work which, because he knew the orchestra so well, there are many solos for specific players and for specific instruments. For instance, it starts with a cello solo, there's a trumpet solo, a clarinet solo, a flute cadenza, wonderful moments for just strings and a lot of percussion and it ends with an incredible uh, joyful uh, quality of sound and, and and an energy which is quite positive which is Frank to Kelly in a nutshell because this is just the kind of person he is I performed this particular piece radiant voices on one two three four continents uh, all across the world and has been met with equal success in each place each time. It is an incredibly well composed piece that is exciting to play and even more exciting to listen to. So I'm sure you're going to enjoy Radiant Voices. Now, you say, well, what does Frank De Kelly and Beethoven's Ninth have to do with one another? Well, you see, Radiant Voices talks about voices, but there are no voices in the music. And Beethoven's Ninth is actually a symphony in search of a voice. If you think about it, the first movement of Beethoven's Ninth, there's no voice. There's actually not even a long melody. It's very motivic. It's very rhythmic. The second movement is a dance movement. And only in the trio do you start to hear some sort of melodic quality. And then, of course, the third movement, the lovely ostinato and the first violins, all of a sudden, this symphony begins to sing, but not yet with words not yet with the human voice. And only in the finale do we actually hear for the first time the utterance of a human spirit. And this transition is incredibly important. And I always think Beethoven 9 is a symphony in search of a song. And what a song it is. Can you believe that he wrote a tune that even my two-year-old daughter could hum that I'm sure we could all hum, that has become an anthem for peace, for unification, for brotherly love, for manhood, this simple little tune that we all know that we can all hum. One of the texts that I love most in the Beethoven's Ninth, of course, we say it's from Schiller, but I, okay, Schiller might have wrote the words, but it's really a text from Beethoven in so many ways. The words, the sentence is simply, den Kuss der ganzen Welt, the kiss for the whole world. And I really look upon this piece as Beethoven's kiss to the whole world. What a gem he's given us. What Beethoven was trying to convey to us was probably prophetic. He was trying to tell us something. And that's why this piece has lived so long in our lives and in our hearts and on concert stages around the world.